<gasps> oh, yikes. Okay, just a casual Wednesday putting gold on my face. All right, so I've been collecting and hoarding this box of samples for this video for literally a couple years now. I mean, this is extreme. So these are all samples that I've gotten in Sephora or Ulta orders. I thought it'd be interesting because it'll give me a chance to test some products and let you guys know what I think before actually committing to buying it. And I just think it's wild how many samples you can accumulate over the years. So we're gonna be doing a full face. I hope you guys enjoy this video and find it helpful or entertaining or something. If you do while you're watching, you can give it a thumbs up. Let's get into it. I'm gonna link everything I'm trying today down below in the description box. Okay, so one thing I noticed is that I'm pretty sure primers are the most sampled product out there because I literally have about 50 primer samples in here. But before I go in with the primer, I have a product that I can put kind of all over. This is the Milk Makeup Cooling Water. It says, sleep in a stick, deep puff with energizing caffeine, hydrate with soothing sea water. I feel like I'm opening my Imatrex right now. Oh, it's in a very solid state. It's like a waxy. I mean, it makes sense. It normally comes in a stick, but I was expecting it to be like liquidy or for some reason. As I'm rubbing it in my hands, it is like turning into a balm. So I'm gonna apply this underneath my eyes. Kind of smells like sunscreen. Right now it doesn't feel cooling to me at all. I'm just gonna try and use as many of these samples as possible today. So this is the Hello Fab by First Aid Beauty Coconut Water Cream. I've definitely tried this, but I'm gonna use it as an all over moisturizer. It smells coconutty, but also like chemicals. So this is a very gel-like moisturizer, super lightweight feeling. Ah, shit, I should probably go take a thumbnail. BRB with all my samples. I'm gonna go take a picture outside. All right, thumbnail has been taken, we're good. Let me choose one of these five million primers here. So I have a bunch. A few of these I have tried, some of them I have not. Probably the one I'm most excited about is this Guerlain Laure. This is the gold-infused radiance concentrate. There's apparently pure gold in here, folks. I don't know, man. 24 karat gold leaf is in here. <laughs> but we've also got the classic Smashbox photo finish. Oh, this is the Luminizer version. So I have the Dr. Brandt Pour No Pour, <laughs> having issues saying this, Pores No More Luminizer Primer. I don't think I've tried the Luminizer version. I've definitely tried the regular Pores No More. YSL Touche Eclat Blur Primer. This looks like a straight up condom. Oh, I have the Sisley Instant Glow Primer. This is worth like $10 right here. <laughs> Sisley is friggin' expensive. And then we have the Benefit Professional Hydrate Primer. Well, I wanna try like all of these, so how am I gonna do this? I think I'm most curious about the Guerlain and the Sicily because I would never buy the full size of these probably, unless it's amazing, I mean, we'll see. But I'm gonna do half my face with one and half with the other. This one says moisturizing and energizing, radiance boosting, skincare brightens, smooths, and unifies the complexion. Wow, it's very liquidy. Whoa, super liquidy. It smells floral, not like too rosy. The scent isn't terrible. Oh, I like the feel of this. It actually has a little tiny bit of a grip to it. It's not like super slippery feeling and it's definitely glowy. You can see see that glow. Actually, probably like a few uses in here. I think the Guerlain one is supposed to be a little bit blurring, so I'm gonna reserve that for my forehead right there, right between my eyebrows. The glow is a very old, very old, very ethereal kind of glow. Now I'm gonna just put some gold on my face. Just a casual Wednesday putting gold on my face. Okay, you can actually see the gold flex in here. See that? Whoa. I'm curious what the gold is supposed to do. Is it just supposed to give me a glow? Okay, so I'm gonna apply this on my face. This feels very serum-like. Definitely a totally different feel than the other side. We'll see once this one sinks in, but right now this one is not nearly as glowy as this side. And as you can see, this almost gave like the Charlotte Tilbury flawless filter kind of look. I'm just looking them up. The Guerlain is $74 for the primer. Under the highlighted ingredients for the 24 karat gold flakes, it just says provides luxurious radiance. So I guess that's the benefit, just feeling luxurious. Let's see how much the Sicily one is. Ooh, the Sicily one is $95. Whoa, it has really good reviews though. I might be really excessive and actually put the Pores No More Luminizer Primer on right here because neither of those really like did any blurring and the original Pores No More is pretty blurring. This one is the Luminizer version, so we'll see, but it still has that like pore filling kind of feel. Triple Primer Day, it smells very herbal. Didn't do any like crazy filling, I think it, maybe like slightly more filled in. 
Okay, let's go in with foundation. So I have a lot of options here. A few of them I've already talked about, so I know I'm not gonna be including, but the Max Studio Fix Foundation, Dior Backstage, I have a whole video on. I do get asked about the Dior Backstage a lot, but I have a whole review on it. This I'm very curious about. It's the YSL Touche Eclat All-in-One Glow Tinted Moisturizer. But then I know this is a newer foundation from Sephora, the best skin ever Longwear foundation. The shade of this one looks too dark, but I'm also really curious about the Natasha Denona Transfer Matte. Let me make sure these are like, still available. <laughs> uh oh, this one's on sale on Sephora for $22, normally 45, and it only has three stars. Not looking good, Natasha, not looking good. So when retails for $20, it's getting four stars on Sephora. Hmm, that's cool, the bottle's made from 30% recycled glass, better than nothing. This is medium coverage, natural finish, long wearing, up to 12 hours skincare ingredients. Hopefully one of these shades will work. I have like barely any self tanner left over right now. It's like mostly all off, but a little bit. I'm probably gonna be a mix of these two. 22P and 10N. Let's start with 10N and see how it is. So in the past I have not had good luck with four foundations. I have a few just like tragic reviews on their foundations. Fingers crossed for a good foundation day here. I'm gonna start with the shade 10N. Just kidding, let's go in with also 22P. I'm gonna actually add a little bit of this to this side just so I get the same. Yeah, I'm definitely like in between these two shades because that's gonna be too dark. I'm building it up a bit on my cheeks because I feel like I didn't get enough right there and it also says it is supposed to be buildable. It's looking really just skin-like so far. So far it's looking fine. It's not like wowing me, but it does look pretty skin-like, but I'm curious how it's gonna do on my forehead. Okay, I would say on my skin right now, just comparing it to other foundations and how they look on my skin, this one's looking pretty average. I don't think it looks terrible at all, but it doesn't look great. Like I'm not dying to purchase this, mostly because I do feel like it's looking makeup-y in a few areas, like a bit on my forehead. I do think the medium coverage is true. It's not looking bad, it's actually, better than I was expecting. For concealer, I have, actually I have two of these, the Jouer Essential High Coverage Liquid Concealer. I haven't used this in a while. I actually don't really remember what I think of this one. Comes in 25 shades. I'm gonna start with the shade Creme Brulee right there. This one has hyaluronic acid in it. Oh, never mind. that's gonna be way too dark. That's Creme Brulee. Okay, let's go in with wheat. More of a wheat kind of gal. They don't give you a whole lot in here. This is like enough for one application. So I'm gonna dab on. Actually, maybe I'll just try it with my... Oh, wow, that's a lot of coverage. I feel like I had to have tried this, but it's not ringing a bell when I'm applying it. So I don't know, but I'm loving that coverage. Definitely full coverage. I didn't even use like half of that. That's looking good right now. I like the feel of it. It's creamy, it doesn't feel too drying, but it also feels like it's kind of starting to set down. So hopefully it's not gonna be a major creaser. If I ordered this, I think I would get maybe one shade up and slightly more pink toned because this one's definitely pretty yellow toned. So I have this Lilabo, it says face bronzer gel, but I'm kind of wondering if this is more of like a tanner product. Oh yeah, I don't think this is like a liquid bronzer. It's more of like, it says add a dab of face moisturizer and blend on your face, like kind of a, you know, wash of color kind of thing. Some products are just not easy to get samples of like eyeshadow and powder products or like bronzer. So instead I'm actually gonna take the darker shade of concealer. First I'm gonna try Dolce de Leche. I'm trying to use this shade as kind of a bronzer. Because it's a high coverage concealer, this will also help to add some coverage onto my cheek area. Hopefully it won't look super orange. Here we go. I'm just using my e.l.f. Putty Primer applicator brush. I'm gonna bring this up and just use it as a liquid bronzer basically. This you can do obviously with any Product. If you find a good shade of concealer that you like or just a formula that sits really nicely on your skin, you could always use a darker shade as, you know, liquid bronzer. It's sitting really nicely. That actually works. It looks just like a warm bronzer. Usually I go for a little bit more cool tone as far as the shade, but it's looking really nice. This is the shade Amber. I'm curious if I take the tiniest amount of this, if it'll just add a little bit more, less orange, more bronze. Okay, I'm actually really liking that concealer as a bronzer. Like if I went in store Sephora and could kind of see the shades better, I might potentially get kind of a more neutral shade that would be really nice as a bronzer because I'm really liking the way it's sitting on my skin. It's definitely a matte concealer. So for a blush, I have a little sample guy of the Rare Beauty liquid blush. How 
freaking cute is this tiny thing? This is in the shade Grace. Look how mini this is. So tiny, so cute. It still has a little doe foot applicator. Look at that guy. The Rare Beauty Blush and Happy is one of my all-time favorite liquid blushes. And I have already used this one. It was in my travel makeup bag. It's just more of a berry color. I still do prefer the Happy shade, but this one's also really pretty. And I think if you had more of a kind of like olivey skin tone, this shade might look even better. These are very pigmented, so you don't need a lot. And as you can see, I'm like blending it over to the other side. You don't need a ton of this at all. Like this little sample thing would literally probably last you months. What is happening right here? <laughs> I feel like I'm just having one of those weird skin days where like something weird is picking up right there. I'm really excited to try this brow product because it's from the same line as my favorite brow blade, but this is more of a brow gel. It says brow voluminizer primer in color. But yeah, I have brunette Betty here. It says you swipe on the primer to amp up the volume of your existing brows and then you put on the brow gel to get color. It says it's smudge proof and doesn't transfer. So let's go in with the primer side first. Oh wow, this is so tiny. It does have a light color to it. Like it is adding some lightness to my brows, but we're gonna go in with the color afterwards. Actually, it does feel a little bit waxy. It's weird, going on it feels very light and powdery, but then to the touch, my brows definitely have a bit of like a hold to them. It definitely looks like it's giving some volume. Let's go in with the color side. Whoa. Oh my God. <laughs> It does have like a reddish color, so I don't think this would necessarily be my shade, but we're gonna work with that after. <gasps> oh, yikes. Okay. It is giving a lot of volume. Like my hair is definitely out more off my face than it usually is. I'm gonna go in with my current obsession, the Milani Weekend Brow. This is amazing from the drugstore. It has a super fine tip. If you like a brow pen, this is amazing. I'm gonna go in with this mini little Mac Fix Plus. So cute. I love Mac Fix Plus. I actually haven't repurchased the full size in a while, probably like a year now, just because I have so many setting sprays to go through, but it's one of my all time favorites. If you've never tried it, it is one of the few that really melts your makeup into your skin. If you're trying to make your powders not look powdery and just give like a really pretty glow, Mac Fix Plus is where it's at. I just realized I totally forgot highlighter. So the only highlight sample I was able to collect was the Becca Shimmery Skin Perfector. This one's actually in Champagne Pop. I do have the full size of that one. It's interesting how they can do this, like a little powder on paper. I guess it's not that crazy, but <laughs> it sounds crazy in my mind. I'm actually gonna try this new ColourPop brush, the F24. I don't know if just the rose gold is new or if it's an actual like new brush in their line, but I think my setting spray is dry enough, hopefully. Whenever I have more of like a wet, base that I'm putting on over top. I like to tap first so it doesn't lift stuff up. Oh yeah, forgot how pretty Champagne Pop is. I think it's actually making it even more metallic because my face is slightly damp because of that setting spray. Ooh, this makes me wanna whip out my, my big size. Brush feels nice. Just got a lot of highlight on my upper lip. <laughs> I forgot how pretty that highlight is. So eyeshadow was the one product that I just could not get a sample of. I never saw it pop up, which is kind of weird. So I'm just gonna do my eyeshadow. I'm just gonna go in with this Lottie London, the Rose Golds palette. This is, I think, new from them. Just blending the matte pink shade into the crease right here. Then I'm gonna take this brown shade right here. Ooh, these feel nice and soft, very blendable. Bringing that all over the lid, apparently. I think I wanna take this shade because it kind of matches my shirt. Um, that looks like it's gonna be beautiful. Oh yeah, so pretty. So I just put on liner, used my NYX Epic Ink Liner. This stuff is so good. That and the Milani are like my top two drugstore products right now. Then for mascara, I actually have a lash primer to try. So this is the Lancome Sills Booster XL Super Enhancing Mascara Base. I feel like when I got my makeup done at the Lancome counter and did a video on it, did she use this? I feel like she might have. I used to always use the MAC Lash Primer, but I do feel like I've tried this at some point, but I don't remember what I think, so I'm actually really excited to try this out. Sometimes lash primers can actually really make a difference with how your mascara looks. It can just add a lot of volume and kind of separation. And I actually feel like I should repurchase the MAC one. I haven't used that in years, but it did make a difference. 
It's always hard to apply mascara with samples because the wand is so small, like the part you hold. There's always kind of a balance that you have to find with each product and mascara of how long to actually let the lash primer sit on your lashes before going in with a second coat. You still want it to be a little bit wet. So while it's a little bit wet, so I need to stop talking. We need to put this on. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Legendary Lashes Volume 2 Mascara. I want to say I have the full size of this. All of the Charlotte Tilbury mascaras, like the, the names and stuff, just sound really similar to me. Ooh, it's looking good. I feel like the primer is doing something, maybe. It might be kind of hard to see because of how thick my liner is today, but the lashes are looking real good. It looks like it's adding a lot of volume. If you've tried that Lancome lash primer, let me know what you think down below or if you like regularly use it. This is my favorite Charlotte Tilbury mascara, by the way, the Pillow Talk push-up lashes. It has the comb applicator and it's different on both sides, but it gives you a ton of volume. Primers, there were a lot of samples, but I think the close second is lip products. There are so many lip product samples that get sent out. We have a ton of options here. So here's the Shiseido lipstick, visionary gel lipstick. I have this Lila B, which I know I've definitely not tried. It's the Divine Duo Lip and Cheek. Oh, I could have used this on my cheeks. And then I have the NARS Audacious lipsticks. These aren't new. The formula of these are great, super nice, long lasting. There's so many. Then I have the Sephora Lip Stories. I have also tried a couple of these. These are nice formula too. It looks like there's a nice nude one in there. Actually, I have that tan lines. The Bare Minerals Statement Liquid Lipstick. I've definitely tried these. That one's a pure red, which I'm not in the mood for. So I think I'm gonna go with the Lila B, this kind of peachy shade, which is Be Real. It's a very balmy kind of texture. Usually products that you can use on your lips and cheeks have this kind of feel to it where they're kind of more airy. I've been loving these just like more natural lip products where they almost give you that like matte moussey look. Okay, that shade is really pretty. It actually looks a lot lighter and more pink on the lips. If I didn't already put that powder highlight on, I would totally try and add a little bit to my cheeks right now. Feels really, really lightweight on the lips. I do have one lip gloss sample. This is the Winky Lux Coffee Glaze. Very cute little box packaging for a sample. Ooh, I think this is gonna go really well with the eye look we have going on. It smells like vanilla. Oh, that's pretty. The combo of those. It's like my perfect light pinky shade. This gloss feels very comfortable. It's not super glossy. Like it's not a really shiny kind of formula. It's just kind of like a natural shine. All right, that's everything. I feel like we had some winners. The thing I'm most curious to keep testing is the Lancome Lash Primer because I do think this did something and I'm liking how my lashes look right now. I feel re-inspired to whip out the, not that to bring champagne pop back out because I am loving how intense my highlight is right now. I think I'm leaning back towards the really intense highlights. I've just been super into highlighter again lately. And then the Jouer Concealer. This one pleasantly surprised me. Like I said, I need to check my collection because I may even have the full size of this one. I'm not sure, but I'm really liking how the concealer looks. I love the coverage. It does slightly set down to more of like a matte finish, but I really like it as a bronzer, not this exact shade, but just that formula. So like I said, I think I would try to find a more neutral shade and use that as like a liquid bronzer. I would pass on the Sephora foundation. I just think there are better skin-like foundations out there. I'm not like blown away. Like I said, it doesn't look bad. And for medium coverage, like I just think you can go with the Essence Pretty Natural Foundation, which is $6 instead. I do think the Urban Decay Lash product is interesting and I think some people might really like this. If you have the Kosas Airbrow and you like that look of just a more soft filled in look, I think you might really like the Urban Decay one. This one just lifts a little bit more. So if you like the look of the Kosas, but this one doesn't have that hold, you might like this product instead. Out of the primers, the Sicily primer definitely stands out to me more than the other one. But for $95, I mean, it would have to be like incredible. There actually is a primer going around right now. It might be from Sisley, but it's like a super blurring, long lasting primer. That one I'm curious to try. Let me know if you guys would want to see a video testing that. I will say though, my face has a very nice underneath glow coming through right now that I'm assuming is from the primer. It almost reminds me of the Becca Backlight Primer or like the Lumi Glotion L'Oreal. That's everything. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I'm going to have all the products, all the samples I tried out listed down below in the description box if you want to check anything out.